right, we're at 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 16. Uh, today, uh, I want to talk about three parts. You know, the Bible says that um, God is existing in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But the Bible goes on to tell us that these three are one. How can three be one? How many people have a car? How many people in there own your own vehicle? There's many different parts of that vehicle. You have the steering wheel, you have the tires, you have the engine, the rims, the radiator, brakes, brake pads, spark plugs, starter, alternator, many different parts. The Bible said we're many different members, one body, right? How many people said today that I'm going to drive my tires to work? Oh, the next day I'm going to drive my steering wheel to work. Maybe the next day I'll drive my alternator to work. You didn't say that. You just said car. Car sounds singular to me, but it's many different parts. That's how we understand the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Three parts, but they move as one. They agree in one. That means there's no dissension. There's no disagreeing. They're, they are in complete harmony. They move as one. If God speaks, the whole, Jesus and the Holy Ghost, I'll say, well, uh, Father, I have a difference of opinion. Can I, can I share with you what I think and maybe we can come to some um, middle ground? No. They move as one. So today I want to talk about three parts to help us understand God's plan. For provision. I heard that word a few times in service today. Now, I'm not saying that these three are the only three that work in the plan of God's provision in our lives. But what I'm simply trying to do is just share with you what God has given me. And it happened to be three. Three parts. Is that all right? Definition. For provision. Something provided. A measure or other means for meeting a need. Provisions are made for meeting a need. How many people know that my God shall supply all my needs? Somebody say that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. The first thing I want to let you know is that if you needed it and you're following God, you'd have it. There are a lot of things that we can think of right now that we feel like we need. But in my understanding of this scripture, if you needed it right now at this particular time to accomplish, see, the thing that is needed to fulfill God's will in your life, he supply it. The other thing that I want to help the people of God to understand is sometimes your need isn't big enough. Because first of all, the Bible lets us know in Philippians 4 and 19 that God is rich in glory. So maybe your need isn't big enough to facilitate the glory. Maybe you need to increase your need. 